Okay, stop. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about the protein microarray, what the protein microarray is, and uh, how it is useful for us, and uh, how to prepare this protein microarray, and um, uh, different methods and its types. So, the protein microarray is a high throughput method used to track the interactions and activities of proteins. How? interactions and activities we are getting from protein microarray is uh, like uh, in a cell what happen for any process to occur any process to undergo there is some interactions occurring which involve binding of one protein to the another protein or binding of protein to some dna segments that includes our initiation of transcription like similar uh, examples there are a lot of interaction and we want to know that this protein means our interest of protein will bind to whom in a cell so we immobilize the protein on a on a chip and then we load the sample and only the remain which interact which bind will bind each other other will run away so this is the and from there we get information that this protein binds to this protein and do that function so we get a full information pathway or means we can get a uh, whole information that this bind to this and this gives, gives result to this. So it's a high throughput method used to track the interaction and activities of protein and to determine their function and determining function on a large scale. Uh, this technology complement other techniques such as mass spectrometry is to, to hybrid actually these two techniques are used for the same purposes to know about the protein protein interaction to know about the interactions but this protein microarray is superior to these techniques because uh, let's uh, uh, take an example of is2 hybrid assay what happened that in is2 hybrid assay uh, we separate proteins means uh, a protein in different uh, cells means they remain inactive in different cells and when they both prey and bite come into a cell into a e cell they interact each other and then they are functional and from there we are identify that this protein uh, binds to the this protein and become functional but it's a very long process my protein microarray very short process very easy and uh, easy even the cheaper also cheaper process so so we get different uh, identification of thousands of protein protein interactions protein lipids protein antibody interactions or protein dna interactions how we prepare the protein microarray what happened that uh, there is a chip is there which was coated coated with the streptavidin you can say which is inert should not alter the structure of protein so uh, it was it hold the protein with biotin and there is a tag a folding marker bccp that is biotin carboxyl carrier protein uh, it hold the protein and only the proper folded protein remain attached to the streptavidin other will wash away like here the unfolded it is attached attaching here but it will wash away after when we uh, wash it only then proper folate will remain attached to it proteins uh, are immobilized on the array when they are correctly folded other things what we can use for the preparation of uh, microarrays variety of slide surface can be used popularly aldehyde or epoxy derivative glass surface for random attachment through a means nitrocellulose or gel coated slides and a nickel coated slide for affinity attachment of his six stacked protein and uh, we can also and we also use a probe a probe is what which uh, uh, probe is what when our protein get attached uh, to interact with other so it fluoresces fluoresces it gives us uh, information that this this like this this red things gives us information that these things are binded and they fluoresce after protein are immobilized 
on the slide they can be probed for a variety of function typically probe molecules are labeled with fluorescent dye so that when the probe binds to the protein it result in fluorescent signal understand and finally the resulting signal are usually measured by detecting these labels that was the function of the probe and it's very important unless um because if we, if this is not the happen then we have no clue that is our protein binded or not now what are the methods i told you about the how we prepare now there are different methods of arraying the protein of arraying the protein Robotic method, ink jetting method, PC of spotting, photolithography method. In this method, robotic is a contact microscopy method, while the other three are non-contact microscopic method. Robotic method is most most preferably also as it in, include robotic spotting, means robot is used to spot our protein on a chip. Not we are doing. but here the robot is doing the work so we call this method a robotic method ink jetting method piezoelectric method photolithography these are the different methods different way of spotting on a chip different ways of protein spotting on a chip so uh, now types of protein microarray there are three types of micro protein microarray that is analytical functional and reverse phase protein microarray you can see this <coughs> reverse phase analytical functional what happen is in analytical analytical microarray <coughs> sorry <coughs> oops analytical microarray is like common antibody microarray in which one antibody is already binded on the surface our antigen which having the epitope come and bind to that ant antibody then another secondary antibody which having the probe on it will come and bind to that antigen giving us a sandwich model like this understand this anti antigen is uh, antibody is already immobilized on the chip this antigen recognized it uh, its epitope here and it's bind to this antibody now it's uh, similar to this secondary antibody come with the signal signaling label or a probe which fluoresces like i told you before that it fluoresces when it comes and bind so it will give us signal that epit that antigen is captured so antigen or you can say anything uh, captured by secondary antibody and then uh, this fluoresces and this give us signals for detection it is used to detect proteins in biological sample often a second is used to detect a protein second is secondary second antibody is used to detect a protein that is captured and the antibody attached to the solid phase is a principle is similar to amino acid the first antibody is spotted on the array and then captured antigen on the chip is detected with second antibody that recognize a different part of antigen Now second is functional protein microarray. Functional protein microarray is tell about the different interaction between the protein, protein, protein lipid, protein DNA, protein drugs, etc. So target protein array. This is what this is the application of uh, protein microarray that it gives a protein protein interaction which is a functional microarray. protein lipid interaction you can say that there is a protein or there is a lipids there so uh, that it tell this about that that this protein binds to this lipids in a cell this is not just only in vivo happening this binding happens into the cells so it give us a clue that what what is happening in the in vivo 
in the cell what is happening what thing is binding to what thing protein dna interaction that this protein is binding to this segment of dna that th this genes are binds to this protein because in a dna there are gene dna there are genes or there are segments sequences so we can say that this protein binds to that sequence okay kinase and profile the second third is reverse phase here in the reverse phase protein microarray we use the tissue lysate uh, so what uh, mm, uh, how do we perform this is that we uh, the lysate is arranged on the onto the microarray and probed with antibodies against the target protein of interest so we arrange the lysate on the microarray and then probe with antibodies means like we seen in second secondary antibody which was uh, with probed in the analytical microarray technique method so similarly in this microarray uh, we lysate lysate of tissues are arranged on the micro are arranged on a microarray and then secondly the probe with antibody against the target uh, of interest and these antibodies are typically detected with chemiluminescent fluorescence and or chlorimetric assay it allows the determination of presence of altered protein or other agents that may be result of disease specifically post translation modification can be modification which are typically altered as a result of disease can be detected using rpa now application in a five major areas we divided the application of the protein microarray in a diagnostic in a proteomics in a protein functional analysis in antibody characterization and treatment how it involved in the diagnostic let's say it involved the detection of antigen and antibodies in blood sample to discover new disease biomarkers monitoring of disease state and responses to therapies in personalized medicine the monitoring of environment and food um second is proteomics proteomics is to study the function to study all proteins in a cell is the proteomics the study of all protein in a cell proteomics pertain to protein expression profile that what protein is expressing in that cell in how much quantity in uh, how much way and how that is which protein are expressed in the lysate of a part of a cell third is protein functional analysis means which protein is binding to which the different interactions that we talk protein protein interaction protein phospholipid interaction small molecule target enzymatic and substrate antibody characterization and its characterizing cross reactivity specificity and mapping the epitopes treatment development involves the development of antigen specific therapies for autoimmunity cancer allergies identification of small molecule targets that could potentially be used as a new drug so this is the application thank you very much for watching this video I'm very glad.